Well, welcome to episode 21 of Ralph's Stuff. Tonight, Josie the Video Dog, the dog that is never still. Animation test. Another story of us going to the dogs, Bandit the Dog. In excerpts from my gorilla video class I taught on 316 at the studios of Channel 20. So we hope you enjoy. Hi, and welcome back to Ralph's Stuff. As we saw in the introduction, this is episode number 21. Actually, I was counting up since last October. I produced over 80 hours or 90 complete shows. If you're interested in producing uh, television shows and having them broadcast on almost any subject, then contact URTV for more information, URTV.org. Here in Asheville, North Carolina, Channel 20, Public Access TV, it's a way of life. Enjoy. And on with the show. Hey, Josie. I met Josie the Video Dog when I was helping a fellow producer check out his new studio that he'd built in his warehouse. You can see the green chroma key painted on the floor. And Josie, of course, is more interested in... Josie. In carrying around the ball she likes to play with. Hi, She's a, a Labrador retriever, so she likes to have something in her mouth at all the time. At all times, rather. And she is seldom still, especially when she wants to play. And she's not too concerned with the fact that we're trying to set up camera angles and getting the lighting right and preparing to produce a show. Josie wants to be on camera all the time. However, she does it pretty well. And it's fun to play with. And if you keep the camera pointed at human eye level, she doesn't get in the picture that much. Unless we're doing it intentionally like here. Well, I am uh, happen to have my camera with me. And while... Uh, uh, the crew was setting up for the for the show. I was shooting Josie and having fun. Hey, she loves that ball, but uh, and she loves to have you throw it so she can retrieve it. But she won't just give it to you. You got to fight her to get it. Uh, I think that's part of the game also. <laughs> but once you get the ball away from her and throw it, she'll go get it. And but she won't bring it back to you. You got to chase her down and uh, take the ball away again and. and also, that's part of the game. Yeah, hi, Josie. I see you. But she loves that ball. Like most Labrador retrievers, see? That's why they're called retrievers, I suppose. <laughs> Crazy dog. Yeah, there she goes. Hi, Josie. I got a nice shot of my knees there. Sitting in one of the studio chairs, taking it easy. A lot of uh, sitting around and waiting goes on when you're producing video while you're getting stuff set up and ready to go. Which bores, bores well. Josie quite a bit. She'd rather be playing than uh, shooting video. But she makes a good subject. We got a nice slow segment out of this. <coughs> While we're trying to set camera and light levels. <coughs> Amazing that uh, she doesn't get tangled up in the wire, but wires, but she's pretty sure footed. Never a dull moment with Josie around, that's for sure. <laughs> Josie the video dog. <laughs> you won't find accessories like this in the big video professional video catalogs. 
Video dogs are rare. Oh. <coughs> she is persistent. When she wants to play, she wants to play. So much for rehearsing. But once you learn to ignore her while you're shooting video, she doesn't appear in the pictures and uh, you still get good video. Don't give up Josie sooner or later. Someone will take the ball away from you and throw it. And you can run like crazy through the warehouse and bring it back. It takes a lot of energy to be a video dog. You have to keep moving all the time. Never, never stop. <laughs> ah, finally, finally she got the attention of a human. And she will not give the ball back. You gotta take it away from her again. I'm fascinated by computer animation. This is one of several tests I'm running to learn how to employ different techniques. When this uh, spaceship or whatever it might be gets closer, you can see the surface is shining. You get all sorts of neat reflections in it. And I programmed all that in in various ways to to do this test and it came out pretty good. I'm pleased with it. Looks good. I basically just want something with a lot of different surfaces and very irregular so that I could see how it looked. Come here, Bandit. What you doing, buddy? Huh? What you know? Hello, Bandit. Come on. Hey, Bandit. Hi, buddy.
I have in the introduction here a reason for uh, Gorilla Video. And by the way, you guys can stop and ask questions whenever you want to. It's, uh, it's a very informal class. But <clears throat> I was born and raised here in the mountains. Uh, in fact, right here in Buckingham County. I was born down in Biltmore when it was a separate town. So I know the, uh, the traditions and culture of the area pretty well. And there are two concepts here, uh, making do and beholding, that really has a lot of uh, uh, impact on what we're going to be talking about for the next three weeks. Making do, if you've ever talked to any uh, elderly person who was here in the mountains during the Great Depression back in the uh, late 20s and early 30s, like my parents were, uh, you know that <clears throat> there was just no cash money available. So whenever they wanted something, they couldn't go to the store and buy it. They either had to make it or do it without. So they made their own clothes. They made their furniture. They made their own drinking liquor. They, they did lots of good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead. I can always edit out parts like that. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just let it run. <coughs> because we'll... We'll edit. Uh, but the reason people did that was twofold. First of all, they didn't have the money to, to buy stuff. And secondly, mountain people have always been independent. As long as I have three taters in the house, I can tell everybody to go to hell. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the way mountain people feel. Well, you know... <coughs> When you think about it, this concept is not unique to mountain people. We all, in some ways, want to be independent. And I hope it's the reason you guys are taking this class. To tell everybody to go to hell? <laughs> no, not necessarily that, but to, to be able to do your, your shows when you want to, uh, as much as you want to, take advantage of anything that comes along. I think that that's basic to just make an art. Yeah. You, know, you take whatever materials you got available to you and then you make something come out of it. Very much so. It's, uh, uh, it's all part of creativity. And, and that's how I've made my living for over three decades now. You know, I see something, I think, hey, somebody might like to read about this if I was to write it up. So I write it up, and sure enough, they do. And occasionally, they even pay money. So you, it sounded like you said that you had, like, a pretty substantial, <laughs> uh, uh, like, collection of writings. Yeah. Do you have that like listed down someplace? Are you going to hand that to us too? Uh, if I was to give you a list of my writings, it would be that thick because I've been making my living for 30 years doing that. What, uh, what have you been writing for? I mean, has it been like magazine publications? or? I've done several thousand magazine articles, uh -huh. short stories, uh, a lot of books, especially books about computers. That's been one of my uh, <clears throat> One of my specialties over the years, I wrote the first U.S. book on computer viruses, for example, in 1988 and got on national TV because of it. And, uh, write local hit and regional history and <clears throat> also publish books for the largest independently owned publisher in Western North Carolina, which is not a real brag because <laughs> there aren't many publishers up here. And, uh, well, I was speaking uh, imperially. <laughs> I am the company, Pat and I are. And we've published uh, six or seven hundred titles in 30 years. Some of them national, uh, a lot local. What about uh, DVDs? Are you producing DVDs for people when they finish them? Yes, I am. I have. Uh, I think 45 DVDs on Amazon.com already. They're, mm -hmm. And they're from shows I've done that were on your TV, and they're actually selling. I'm just wrapping up my hat making. Yeah. Well, you know, those would sell. Good. Yeah, those would sell. And we'll talk in uh, the third class about how you can uh, get them on DVD and I'll market them, which is really good. We're talking, we were talking about independence. Okay. when you were gone, which is a concept not really unique to the mountains when you think about it. And it's, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I had the flu last week, I'm still getting over it. That was so much fun. Uh, but the important thing 
when you consider there's lots, and I love uh, your TV and the facilities here. We've got a fantastic studio with lots of lights, none of which we're using on purpose. Everything we're using tonight is stuff that I, I show you how to set up and use for yourself. But the problem with, with the studio right now is the board's broken. And it's been down for like two weeks or so. I think they've got a temporary board back up now. <coughs> uh, so, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that depend on the studio that can't use it right now. Uh, Asheville Global Report, for example. I don't know where they're filming. Uh, your TV has over 500 members already. More and more of them are starting to produce, which means it's going to get harder and harder to check out cameras. Plus, when you get a camera, you don't know who's had it before, what they've done to the controls, uh, what kind of shape it's in. Uh, if you get a great opportunity to film something like your trip to Nashville and you can't get a camera, what kind of shape are you then? And then, you know, you're, you're out of luck. Luckily, she has her own camera, so she can go and do it. And the nice thing about it is, having your own equipment is not as expensive as people think. But even microphones are six or seven hundred dollars. Light systems are two thousand uh, dollars. Like Senator Everett Dirksen said one time, a million here, a million there, pretty soon it turns into real money. So most of us can't afford to invest forty, fifty thousand dollars in a in a video system. Well, luckily you don't have to. And uh, that part of independence and self-reliance we're going to teach you here. For example, in filming this, I'm lighting it with uh, less than $100 worth of lighting equipment. And uh, we'll, we'll discuss that, like, including the stands, these four lights, the, and the two umbrellas. Yep. <clears throat> and we're going to... I'm impressed. It's fine. I got a lot of neat tricks like that, and uh, I'll go over the lighting ones with you tonight. Uh, so basically, what we're going to learn during this course is, is how to get video done. Uh, I'm sure all of you have heard the old lights, camera, action that they shout when they're making movies. In fact, it's it's almost a cliche now. If anybody's making a movie about somebody making a movie, that's in it. Well, I want to change that a little bit because there are three basics, just like the legs of a tripod, there are three basics to turn out professional video. And it's so incredibly simple that uh, anyone can do it, even me. And we're changing it lights, sound, and content. Content, of course, is what a show's about. And frankly, if you've got good lighting and good sound, you can fudge on the content. I mean, people will accept it. But the common viewer, even if they don't understand what's going on, they'll notice if you're missing out on the lighting, if they can't see it very well, or if a guy's backlit and his face is black, uh, <clears throat> or if you can't hear people. That drives me crazy when, <laughs> when some of the shows I've watched on Channel 20, you can't understand what they're saying. You got two people sitting on the couch and the camera's back about where my camera is now. But it's, it's just echoey and hollow, and, and you can't hear what's going on. So uh, we want to show you. And next week, we'll be spent on sound and cameras. So we'll teach you how to, how to mic and do stuff. For example, I'm mic'd here. I've got a remote microphone, wireless microphone that's being picked up <coughs> and recorded on the camera as we, uh, as we film. So tonight is how to do the basics uh, of lighting. And uh, I'll be showing you how to actually do it with diagrams and everything. Next week is, as I mentioned, sound and camera. And the, uh, the last week is how to edit. Because once you get some good stuff, you got to know how to uh, cut and paste and edit and make it look good and do a good voiceover and put maybe some nice background music behind it. 
and burn it to DVD. Uh, how many of you have your own editing programs? Okay, well you're in luck Richard. I'll show you how to get a, a really good editing program for under $100. <clears throat> I'd like to show you how to get a nice open source one for free, but none of the open source programs are really up to it yet. I've tried most of them. So, let's talk a little bit about the philosophy of guerrilla video. Uh, now there is a term that's been out there for a number of years called guerrilla, G-U-E-R, uh, as in guys who run around the jungle with nasty weapons, a few of whom I met in person years ago. Uh, <laughs> it's all right, they were paying me $200 a month for that. So, uh, <clears throat> But uh, guerrilla, G-U-E-R, filmmaking is how to make film with little or no resources, which covers most of us here, certainly me. <clears throat> guerrilla vid is simply carrying the guerrilla concepts even farther. And when you think about it, the old gorilla out there in the jungle, he doesn't really have to know a lot. Uh, about all he has to know is how to recognize the banana trees and uh, tell if the bananas are ripe. That's pretty easy, they're yellow, right? So he pulls them off and eats them. That's gorilla video. That's going out and find something to film. What's he doing? He's making a show right now. He's found something to film. Well, uh, and you can find stuff in all sorts of ways. It's like uh, Pat and I both have a job, uh, one of our several businesses where we have to travel all over Western North Carolina. You know, I gotta go to Murphy, I gotta go to Highlands, Mitchell County. So I just mount the camera in the car and bingo, you know. I just, I've got an hour, an hour program, usually three or four hours on a long trip like to Murphy, I get four hours. And uh, it makes a really neat show that people like and they come up to me on the street and says, you know, hey, I enjoy your show, which is always nice. I think, especially yours, Ralph, I might just add to that, it's people can relate to it. Yeah. And I think that's uh, for <clears throat> people that's been here some time, especially that wouldn't know the roads. Yeah. Some people may have been raised over there but haven't been over there in 20 years. Yeah. And they get to see it. And well, the, that's actually, a, you're making a really good point. And it's not just my point. It, it's, it's the point of producing good video. I took the producer's class that uh, Robin ta taught here, which I highly recommend, by the way. Uh, Robin was one of the creators of the Teletubbies, so he's had a, a lot of experience. But the one thing he said out of the, in that workshop that really stuck with me is know your audience. Know who you're producing for. And uh, when I do that show, uh, Rapid Raffle Runs the Roads, I'm producing for people who like scenery in Western North Carolina. And there are a lot of them here. And they keep coming, so the show keeps renewing itself. So that that's one part of, of guerrilla video, you know. When I do the Western shows, I'm aiming it towards all the old guys who grew up in the 30s and 40s and 50s and saw Gene and Roy and Hopping, all those guys, and they were and still are heroes to them. And, and to me too, I enjoy them. Yeah, and we don't have so. those kind of heroes today, do we? No, we don't. They're like the medieval morality plays, you know. You, you always knew good was going to triumph in the end. So it's, it's very satisfying watching. There may not be much art to it, but they're fun. Uh, my other show, Ralph's Stuff, where I just put in whatever I want to put in, is generally oriented towards confusing audiences, I think, but that's, that's art also. So people enjoy that, but usually it's one particular segment they've seen that they like, not necessarily the, the show as a whole. So <clears throat> gorillas don't let the fact that professional video equipment costs thousands of dollars stop them. They figure out a way to do it and they get the video and they get the shot. And uh, often it's, it boils down to having your camera with you. If you don't have your camera with you, it doesn't matter what you find, you can't shoot it. So you need to own your own camera and it needs to be in the car. Mine always goes with me when I go out. And I occasionally find something worth plucking from the tree and peeling it and eating it. 
and it turns into a video. Well, basically, that's low-hanging fruit. Exactly. Grab it off the tree, because if you don't, the next grill along will. And grillers don't share that much. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, trying. Uh, well, some examples we've already talked about. Uh, <coughs> uh, mounting the camera in the car and, and shooting. And, and by the way, that's a renewable show because seasons change. You know, now spring's coming. Dogwood blossoms are starting to peek out. Uh, rhododendrons are starting to, the buds are starting to open. There's all sorts of neat stuff coming. So all those shows I've already filmed, the 20-some hours, I'm doing right all over again. So it's, uh, it's good to have that. Uh, Another example of gorilla video, what if you're walking down the street and you meet uh, uh, a celebrity or a notable and you get to talking to them and uh, you say, can I have a quick interview? And they say, yes, bingo. You've got a show. Or if uh, the Goodyear blimp comes along and gets impaled on the Jackson building or something, bingo, you've got a you got a show, plus you can sell the footage all over the all over the world, probably. And, and of course, you can also uh, <coughs> the threshold to plan a show is also a lot lower with Gorilla Video. Go to RefWRoberts.com to see this show again.